Yes, guys, welcome to a brand new podcast. I'm your host, Conan, and today we're going to be talking about how you can create your own meal plan from scratch. So I'll be showing exactly step by step how to figure out how many calories you need based on your goals, along with calculating your own macronutrients. And we'll finish off with what foods to actually eat to fill those calories and macros. So without any further ado, let's just jump straight into it. Now, first things first, we have to figure out how many calories we actually need based on our goals. And so there's a bunch of different methods you could use. And there's obviously a bunch of online calorie calculators that you could use. But at the end of the day, guys, no one knows your body better than you do. And I'll even go as far to say that not even you yourself know your body as well. And so this is really where trial and error really comes into play. And so whatever method you decide to use, whether it's an online calorie calculator or like a, a method, whatever it may be, the most basic way to go about this things is simply taking your body weight in pounds and multiplying it by 15. Let's just assume that your main goal is to maintain your weight for now. Just for argument's sake, let's say you're 200 pounds and your goal is to maintain your weight. So it'll be 200 multiplied by 15 and that should give us 3000 calories to maintain your weight. And now, like I said, this number is not going to be 100% accurate. And so it's really important now, guys, to um, put this into action. So take this number of calories, whatever number you came up with, and you're gonna eat the same amount of calories for at least two weeks. And now during this experiment, you do wanna make sure that you keep everything as consistent as you can. So what I mean by that is try to keep your daily activity the same, don't drastically increase or reduce your daily step counts. Keep your workouts the same if you are working out right now. Keep your water intake the same. Keep your sleep the same. Keep your stress levels the same. Pretty much keep your entire lifestyle the exact same because you want as little fluctuations as possible during this process. And so by you constantly changing things up in this kind of two-week process, it's going to be really difficult for your body to like actually know or just for you to know how many calories you actually need, right? And so it's really important to keep as many things constant as you can as you go about these next two weeks. And so let's say, for example, you want to maintain your weight and you're eating these 3,000 calories if you're a 200 pound individual and your weight stays the exact same, congratulations, you have found your maintenance calories. And now let's say for argument's sake, your goal is to lose body fat and the number on the scale stays the exact same as well. Well, then you know, okay, well, this is my maintenance calories. All you have to do from here is just subtract 250 to 500 calories from my maintenance number to lose around half a pound to a pound a week. And you could do the exact same thing with gaining muscle. If your maintenance is 3000 calories and you wanna gain lean muscle mass, you wanna do a lean bulk, all you have to do is just add 250 to 500 calories on top of your maintenance number. It is that simple, guys. It just requires a bit of due diligence and a bit of trial and error on your end. But by the end of these next two weeks, you should come up with a pretty solid number of um, roughly where your calorie target should be at. Now, once we've done that first super simple step, it's time to figure out how many macronutrients we need because obviously we need to fill our calories with something, right? And macronutrients basically include protein, carbohydrates, and fats. And now each macronutrient is absolutely essential to help and preserve muscle mass, to give you energy, and also to um, keep our hormones nice and healthy. Obviously the protein helps with building muscle, the carbs mainly are used for your energy source, and then fats as well are used for energy, but they're also really important just to keep your hormones nice and healthy, testosterone, your libido, your sex drive, your estrogen, all these hormones are super, super important. By incorporating those healthy fats into your diet, you'll keep those at healthy levels. So each macronutrient is super important, and a quick little side tangent here, you've probably seen a bunch of fat diets on the internet, whether it's like a keto diet where you exclude all carbs from your diet or paleo diets, vegan diets, carnivore diets, whatever other diet there's out there, right? And I'll touch on this at the end of today's presentation, but really quickly, I am not a huge fan of any of those diets. Um, unless you have some pre-existing dietary restrictions or you're allergic to something, I assume most people, 99% of most people, and especially if you live in like the Western world, we are all so fortunate and most of us should be able to um, fully digest and be able to eat most foods, right? And so by you limiting yourself or by you, I honestly think you're just gonna be shooting yourself in the foot if you on purpose willingly exclude any food group from your diet. Let's take the keto diet, for example, really quickly before we move over to the next step. You tell yourself you can never have carbs for the rest of your life again. I mean, yes, it sounds kind of cool, maybe not on paper, and you may be kind of excited um, to do maybe for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, even for a couple of years if your willpower is super strong. I want you guys to realistically ask yourself, can I really sustain this diet, sustain this lifestyle for the rest of my life? If the answer to that question is no, the chances of you maintaining that is gonna be very slim. There is actually no point in doing it because if you can't do something for the rest of your life, there's no point in my opinion for doing it for one day. So it's really important here, guys, to follow a diet that you know you can sustain for the rest of your life. So let's go about calculating 
each and every macronutrient, including the protein, carbs, and fats. We're not neglecting everything here. We're all about sustainable results. And um, the best way to go about that is by following a sustainable, balanced diet. So let's start with arguably one of, if not the most important macronutrients, which is protein. So protein has four calories per gram. And a super easy golden rule of thumb to keep in mind is that for every pound you weigh, eats one gram of protein for that. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you're gonna take 200 multiplied by one gram. That's gonna give you 200 grams of protein. So if you weigh 150 pounds, it's gonna be 150 grams of protein. And now because calories or because protein has four calories per gram, we're gonna take four and we're gonna multiply by 200 grams. That's gonna give us 800 calories in total coming from protein. So that's super simple. Again, one gram per pound of body weight. Now let's move over to the fats. Fats actually have nine calories per gram. So they actually have over double the amount of calories per gram compared to protein and carbs. What that means is that fats are just a more calorically dense macronutrient. And what I mean by that is that you get more calories per gram compared to the protein and carbs. The minimum amount of fat you guys should have on average is at least a minimum of 0.4 grams per pound of body weight. So using our 200 pound example, if you weigh 200 pounds, you're gonna multiply it by 0 0.4 and you're gonna get 80 grams of fat. And because like I said, fats have nine calories per gram, we're gonna take nine multiply it by 800 and that's going to give us a total of 720 calories coming from fat and again really quickly when it comes to the fat intake that is like the bare minimum um, just to keep your hormones nice and healthy i actually made the mistake in the past when i did my bodybuilding show in um late 2021 i reduced my fats all the way down like i was eating like probably 20 to 30 grams of fat every single day and that is not healthy at all especially as a natural athlete because you don't have any like exogenous hormones coming into your body right you want to absolutely make sure that your fat intake is to a bare minimum of 0 0.4 grams i actually got my blood tested right after the show i did and my testosterone was so so low like incredibly low below the normal range and i actually got it tested recently so it is like close to um, two years post show and um, i'm actually like at the very top of the range which is actually super cool for me to see but that's besides the point and i kind of go to show you how important fats are healthy fats and we'll talk about what types of foods are found in each macronutrient now basically when it comes to the carbs carbs also have four calories per gram just like protein and um, you're basically we're just going to fill the rest of your calories with carbs and so if we do the math here really quickly like we said 800 calories are coming from protein 720 calories are coming from fat so in total we've used about 1520 calories so far and so remember our example we're eating 3000 calories to maintain our weight at a 200 pound individual so i'm going to take 3000 minus 1520 and that should equal out to 1480 calories left over so really simple what we're going to do is we're going to take that number 1480 divided by four and it's going to give us 370 grams of carbs and that's it guys that's how you calculate your calories and macros so quick little overview 3000 calories 200 grams of protein 370 grams of carbs and 80 grams of fat so those are its total calories and macronutrient goals for that individual and again this number will be different for you based on your goals whether you want to maintain your weight gain more muscle lose body fat and of course based on like your body weight as well right so use this formula to kind of figure out your own numbers and now when it comes to actually like filling those calories and macros with the foods we'll talk about that right now so firstly i want to introduce the 80 20 rule to you guys as the rule implies 80 percent of the time i want you guys to focus mainly on whole natural single ingredient foods and now one quick little test that you can kind of do for yourself is that whenever you eat your next meal whenever you eat your next snack look at the food you're eating and ask yourself how many ingredients are in this single food so let's say you're eating an apple how many ingredients are in one apple well i mean it's just an apple right like there's no added sugars no added salts or processed stuff. like it's literally just an apple right same thing with the potato a potato has one ingredient same thing with um avocados olive oil nut butters make sure you get the 100 natty nut butter try to avoid the um the added sugar one although it is completely fine but it's not going to be 100 natural right same thing with like any source of protein whether it's chicken breast ground beef fish eggs egg whites you name it focus 80 percent of the time on those types of food again single ingredient foods and then the other 20 percent you can definitely indulge in whatever junk foods sweet foods mainly just processed foods right so mainly foods that have more than one ingredient and most of these delicious pastries donuts pizzas burgers fries 
dairy usually have more than um, one ingredient in them, right? It's because um, they're either deep fried, they have a bunch of added ingredients into them, there's some artificial flavorings, and that's totally fine because like I said, guys, it is all about balance. It's all about a sustainable diet. I'm not ever gonna tell you guys to never eat your favorite foods again, whether it's donuts, pizzas, burgers, fries, because I know realistically that is super unattainable. I mean, yeah, you may have to go through a period of time when um, maybe when you do like a bodybuilding show or you do like a prep when you're gonna have to be a bit more disciplined with your diet and you may not include certain food groups. Um, but for the most part, on your day-to-day -day life, it is totally cool to have a healthy balance. One really quick thing that I do wanna mention here, there's almost like a bonus tip, but I really want you guys to be careful when it comes to the other 20%. So like I said, when it comes to the processed foods, because most processed foods are hyper palatable. And what that means is that they actually almost like trigger a response in your body where you just want to, it just leaves you wanting more, right? So for example, this is like a prime example. Whenever I'm done eating my chicken and rice for lunch, for example, I'm not really craving any more chicken and rice. Like that kind of like cures my hunger. I like, it's not like I'm done eating that. I'm like, oh man, I'm really craving some more chicken or I'm really craving some more broccoli right now. Like, no, that doesn't happen. You never hear anyone say like, oh man, I just binged on an entire stock of broccoli, or I just binged on an entire two pounds of chicken breast. Like, no, that does not happen. You never hear anyone say that. You usually hear people say like, oh, I binged on my diet on these Oreos or on this entire pint of ice cream or this entire jar of cookies, right? Like that is where most people binge on their diet, right? And the reason for that is because they are hyper palatable and they're super addicting. The combination of the sugars and the fats and maybe the sweet and saltiness, the texture in your mouth. A lot of people don't think about this, but the way the foods kind of like tastes or like makes you feel like in your mouth, they bake it in a certain way. Like imagine eating cheesecake right now. I mean, it's just so smooth and so soft. Whereas back in like, I guess the olden days when you had to like eat chicken off the bone or you had to eat like some grass or some kind of like berries or whatever, it's like, it's not like like super satisfying or it's not like a really nice sensation in your mouth, right? Whereas nowadays all the foods, like it's just all so soft and then like the, the cheesecake and then like the soft cookies, the brownies, oh my goodness, I'm making myself hungry right now. But all these foods, like not only do they taste amazing due to like the combination of the sugar, the fats, the salt, etc. but it's also like the sensation you get in the mouth from them, right? And so with these foods, I really want you guys to be careful that yes, although I'm giving you permission, to eat 20% of the time eating those types of foods, but be careful because I do not want you guys to get triggered by eating these foods and then one cookie turning into 20 cookies or one small little Oreo turning into 50 Oreos or one scoop of ice cream turning into the entire pint. So really be careful here. And that is why for myself, at least, like I know myself pretty well. Um, like I have, I guess, the willpower after years of like just following this lifestyle where I can get away with like one cookie. Although with that said, like I much rather prefer just like not even having the cookie to begin with because I know that's going to like trigger a response in my body where I just want even more, right? And I'll justify myself saying that like, okay, I had one cookie. I'm already kind of off my diet. So let me just have another one and another one and another one. And before I know it, I'm like, 10,000 calories in and I'm completely ruins the day, right? So to wrap this up, balance is the absolute key. This is a great quote that I heard from Stan Efferding. I think he did a podcast with a modern wisdom, Chris Williamson, highly recommend. But um, one of the quotes he kind of said there in the podcast is, compliance is the science. So focus on something that is simple, sensible, sustainable, and something that you can fit into your lifestyle. So like I said, when it comes to all these fat diets, the keto diets, paleo diets, the vegan diets, I mean, I genuinely honestly just think, unless again, you're allergic to something or your doctor has prescribed you a certain diet, I just think you're gonna be shooting yourself in the foot because if you like, let's say the vegan diets, using this example this time, um, if you can really see yourself never eating like any animal-based products, and again, like if you're like, if this is due to like your religion, that's totally cool. I just think you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot because you're really, really, really limiting yourself um, because most foods nowadays, especially nowadays includes some source of like just animal in it whether it's like from dairy um ice cream yogurts greek yogurts like never having greek yogurt again are you kidding me um protein powder eggs egg whites beef 
chicken, like all of these foods, right? And especially if your goal is to build muscle, it's gonna be hard doing that on the key or on the vegan diet, right? And so overall, hopefully you guys took something out of this presentation. So you guys should know by now how to number one, find how many calories you need based on your unique goals, whether you wanna maintain your weight, gain weight or lose weight. And number two, how to fill those calories with your macronutrients. So again, your protein, carbs and fats. And then lastly, um, again, what foods to actually eat to fill your calories and macros. So with that out of the way, um, I'm gonna wrap things up right now. If you guys took something out of this presentation, hopefully you did. If you have any questions for me, also let me know and I'll see y'all soon. Peace.